So there's tons of projects out there dealing with electromagnetic levitation. Um, people have dealt with it before, how it works. You have an electromagnet, it turns off and on really quick. Um, we're talking a thousand times per second. And what you do is you have a magnet below it. Uh, when it's on, that magnet's attracted to the solenoid. When you shut that solenoid off, the magnet wants to fall because gravity's going to pull it down. When you're turning it off and on that quickly though, it causes the magnet to attract and, well, not attract and fall um, or want to, but it's happening so quickly, it basically causes the magnet to look like it's levitating um, and, you know, and floating in the same spot. My discovery of electromagnetic levitation and researching it is what led me to the design of fan drift. Uh, the idea began with me just wanting to make um, in a nutshell, a levitating ceiling fan. Working just like you would have a magnet floating, you'd have a magnet built into the center axle of the fan, an electromagnet in the ceiling. When you get the, you know, the, the on and off of that electromagnet just right, you basically, in theory, be able to have a, a levitating fan. I can't lie, at first I thought the idea was genius and it was going to be simple. I'd have an electromagnet in the center to hold and cause the fan to levitate and then I'd have you know, some additional electromagnets that would be in charge of the rotation um, and rotating of the fan. Uh, little did I find out that it was not going to be that easy. Okay, I want to sum this up as fast and as easily as possible. I'm turning an electromagnet on and off a thousand times per second. What this does is it creates what we call instability within the system. In order to counteract this instability, in order to prevent the magnet from falling and to, and to stay levitated, you have to have what they call a PID controller. It stands for proportional, integral, and derivative. Basically what you're doing, you're putting values, either, either proportional, integral, or derivative values into an equation and you're taking past and present values in order to predict the future. By being able to predict the future, um, ideally, if you get all your values correct, you'll be able to keep your system stable. You'll be able to keep that magnet floating. After about a month or so of dealing with or trying to deal with the PID settings for my system, I realized I just didn't have enough time and so I needed to change things up so that's when I decided I was going to move to neodymium magnets or as some of you may know them they are called rare earth magnets okay first design I'd have a hole in the ceiling I'd have a large elect or I'd have a large rare earth magnet above that I'd have a large rare earth magnet in the center axle of the fan and they'd be attracted to one another. The fan would want to, you know, attract to that magnet. Uh, the outer, there'd be an outer ring of magnets within the fan axle that would be faced the opposite. They, they would be basically repelling um, a ring of magnets that would be on the ceiling that would actually be, you know, around that hole and they'd be, you know, re repelling one another. The idea was that if I had magnets attracting and repelling, then it should stay somewhat stable, right? It was horrible. It, it was so wrong, it didn't, didn't even slightly work. So I moved on to my next design, which just, my solution was more magnets. Tons of magnets. 104 magnets, to be exact. Um, I'd have a ring of magnets that went all the way around the center um, axle of the fan, and I'd have a ring outside of that and a ring within inside of that. So just tons of magnets. The center ring, let's just say it was the north pole of the magnet facing up, and the rings on either side of that, those pass were, say, the south side facing up. And what I'd do is that hole in the ceiling, I'd actually have a ring of magnets um, that would go around that, and that would be attracted. Those magnets would be attracted to the center ring within the fan axle. So it would therefore be repelling against the outer rings and I figured since it was repelling those outer rings the fan there were so many magnets it should be able to somewhat hold stable and and it would create somewhat of, of a path for its rotation um, yeah it, it didn't really work that way so what did I do you got it I added more magnets and I added them around the ring on the ceiling in hopes to create a little more stability when in reality I just made things absolutely worse. 
I could go over design after design after design. However, straight to the point, I did more research. And I discovered something called Earnshaw's Theorem, which was a discovery made in the 19th century. And in a nutshell, it basically proves that every single thing I've been trying to do with making a stable levitating system with just magnets is impossible, which means I needed to change up my design and do something that's actually capable of being created here on Earth. Okay, so let's just kind of like, let's try to fast forward through here. I mean, here I am just once again trying to throw cone magnets into the mix, which I don't even want to get into my thought process behind that one. Um, I even threw in a ring magnet thinking this and that and I'd have cones going through rings and rings going through cones and it was again just about as big of a disaster um, as everything else. Again, Earnshaw's theorem, it really just, it helped prove everything that I really needed to know about what I was already doing. So, a rod. That's my next and final design. The rod actually goes through what I'm now using in the center of axle of the fan, which is a ring magnet. So it goes right through the center of that ring, neodymium magnet. That's going to hold it in place. That's actually going to hold um, the system in stable. So no more regular neodymium. Now we're going to use a ring so that there's a hole, again, allowing for a pole or you know a rod of some sort. In this case, I wanted to use a non-magnetic material, so I used aluminum that's running straight through the center. Now in order to hold the fan in place, all I really had to do was put a magnet on each side of the fan axle, um, above and below is what I mean from that pole. So I've got them repelling um, in each direction. Those forces are pushing inward, well technically they're pushing away um, from the fan axle by having the poles face one another. Um, for the magnets, but the because they're pushing inward, um, it's actually holding that fan axle in place. So now down below, I actually added two more magnets that are stuck together, a little bit more powerful of a force um, for the magnets that are actually below the fan axle, just due to the fact that the force is going to be a little bit greater um, due to gravity. So I have a fan axle floating in between two different magnets above and below it. Uh, obviously the rod's holding it stable, but it's floating. How freaking cool is that? But now I need to get it to rotate because that is what fans do. So yes, believe it or not, I thought if I just turned the rod, and which would be turning the magnets above and below it, that that would cause fan axle to rotate. I don't know why I thought that. Clearly I was delirious. So what did I do? I made a magnetic gear. The magnetic gear actually rotates its own ring of magnets that sit in perfectly with the ring of magnets that sit along the outside of the fan axle and those repel one another and actually cause rotation of the fan axle. here it is, fan drift. It got its name because of the fact that it levitates in between a set of magnets that sit above and below it. You can see the gaps there as well as rotates. It is almost 100% frictionless. The only contact this fan makes is with that center rod touching the inner magnet to the fan axle. The magnetic gear rotates it without touching it. It also stays in position due to nothing but magnetic fielding. And here's a slightly different view to show you the gap that's taking place with the magnetic gear that I have created causing the rotation. It's important to note that because of the fact that this fan is virtually frictionless that it can be run on much less power. Right now it is at this speed running off of only 2.8 volts.